Hello everyone, my name is Carter Hartley, and for my Alberta Mechanical Engineering Innovation, I'm going to talk to you about wind turbines and how they are benefiting the welfare of public today. So in this video, I'm going to take you through how these turbines work, what we are doing to innovate and improve them, and then how these ideas affect us. You may think of using the power of the wind as a fairly new concept. But in fact, we've been harvesting the power of the wind for hundreds of years. From boat sails and grinding grain to windmills that were used to raise water. Modern wind turbines move much like plane wings, where a pocket of low pressure air forms on one side of the blade that pulls the blade towards it, causing rotation. This rotation moves through the turbine through a series of gears, which increases the rotation of the rotor from about 18 reps per minute roughly 1800 revs per minute. This area is called the gearbox. These gearboxes are large and expensive though. It is one of the areas engineers are looking at in order to increase the turbine's efficiency and energy output. They are exploring ideas of direct drive generators that are, operate at lower rotational speed and some that won't even need these gearboxes. In the world of wind farms, the old adage is true, the bigger is better. The larger the blades, the more area it covers, which allows to capture more airflow. And the taller, the better, because they're able to capture the faster moving winds in a higher atmosphere. Some turbines are large enough to land helicopters on. Engineers are heavily involved with the design, development, and testing of these massive machines. Another innovative idea is that of smart turbines, where they can sense when and where the wind is coming from, as it would lower maintenance and increase power output. Here's what a visual example of this mechanism would look like. Some of the drawbacks of wind energy are the significant startup costs that companies are hesitant to pay for as projects tend to have a long lifespan to recover the costs. And if any problems arise, they could be forced to take a loss. That is why cheaper, more reliable methods are being introduced. In 2015, there were 958 wind turbines in Alberta, which accounted for only 4% of our electricity demand. The plan is to rely on renewable energy resources by 30% by 2030. One step toward that is the carbon tax that will come into effect January 1st, 2017 and bring a predicted $9.6 billion over five years, $3.4 billion going toward renewable energy. And there are significant economic and environmental benefits for the public, as once up and running, Turbines are one of the most affordable for consumers. It is resistant to fluctuating natural gas and oil prices, and it is a decentralized energy source, meaning that it can bring new jobs and energy to almost anywhere in Alberta. With all of these new and exciting innovations in and around Alberta, it seems that our reliance on fossil fuels may be coming less. You, me, and all of our fellow Albertans really benefit from these new and exciting ideas. I hope I have shed at least a little light 